everyone, Wannabot here, and welcome to Solar Raiders. It is a third-person shooter roguelike made by the developers of Blue Fire, which was actually a pretty competent Souls-like Souls -like 3D platformer somewhere kind of in that vein um, that came out a while back, and this is their second game, and it looks really stylish, so I'm just going to dive in and see how it goes. It's up to four-player co-op, but I'm going to be playing solo for at least today, and it's available sort of in demo form. I don't actually... I think the demo's available for everybody. Yeah, the demo's available for everybody at the moment. So, what is her name? Yeah, I'll just be Wanderbot. Choose difficulty. Yeah, I'll just do normal. We'll see how this goes. Kion Galaxy. Subject 525 deceased. Capturing new suspect, or subject, suspect, raider inbound. Wow, the stark difference between what is inside and outside. Welcome, raider. <laughs> Welcome to the Space Nova, newcomer. You've been, shall we say, invited to join us on a mission of great importance. Consider yourself a reinforcement, a valuable addition to our cause. We're on a mission, you see, one that requires exp the expertise of beings like yourself. We're after the Solar Core, the most coveted and powerful source of energy in the entire universe. And you, my friend, are going to help us claim it. Okay, this is cool. Big Boss is open on the main deck to external merchants and mercenaries. They'll provide you with valuable items. You're to remain here on the main deck at all times, is that clear? Oh my gosh, the gunsmith is massive. My name is Nass, by the way. I'm the deck assistant. Talk to me if you need any help. Good luck out there. Is this one of those rare roguelikes that has, like, no tutorial and just lets you get right to it? I mean, obviously, I'm going to have to go buy pants, probably. Uh, okay, so we've got a little bit. That's a very early demo experience. Expect bugs and some other similar issues. And then also Discord and cool. Oh, oh, I am zippy. All right, appearance shop. So what can we buy pants-wise? Am I just the pantsless wonder? Am I really stuck with that? Is that st Wait, why does the hot dog costume... Does doesn't get rid of my head. But it does get rid of my arms. I wonder how much of this is custom. Some of these are really goofy. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I'm the pantsless wonder, so I can't do anything with it. Okay. Yeah, I can't do anything with either of these guys. I guess we, the pantsless wonder, uh, just have to go out on a mission until I can buy some pants. Find and destroy the boss. Fair enough. Oh, wait. Dang. For a second, I thought I suddenly had pants, and the answer is no. That's just the loading screen. Okay, basic movement. Okay, so we have a double jump. And then we also have a dash. We also have a slide. Can I break those? Yes. I don't know if there's a merit to it. We have unlimited ammo, which is good. And the gun sounds need to go down by about half. For my preferences. Okay. You know, I was thinking half, not like 90%. I have no idea how sides, sound sliders work, but I swear turning it down by half... That should be kind of reasonable. Oh, you can break a lot more than I thought. Cool. Okay, grappling hook. All right, nice parkour movement. You can definitely tell, uh, well, I don't know. I guess I would say you can definitely see the influence from, uh, from their previous game into this one. Though I'm immediately liking this one a little bit better. Okay. We also have skills, but we can't do them yet. Now I'm just going to kind of zip through things. I think we've largely figured out how to play. Okay, so I've got some things. Oh, no, we do have, actually have some enemies that we have to worry about. And there's Sweet Spot Reloading. I'm not a big fan of Sweet Spot Reloading, especially in kind of action roguelikes. It's usually just not my flavor. Okay, so I don't have infinite pickup radius. There we go. And eventually we'll have other guns. Enemy presence exterminated. 
Okay, double jump grab these. Boost? Not a boost pad? Not a boost pad, apparently. This is a boost pad. Okay, so we've got a tre treasure chest over here that I should probably pop open. See what we got in it. Perk, too expensive for my blood. I've already forgotten how to grappling hook. I think it's right click, but uh, yeah, it's fine. Okay, we have a turret, but yeah, I don't have enough money. So the question is, where do we go? We've got a couple of doors and we have no idea where any of them go. So I'm gonna just go here. I wonder if you can backtrack. At least the enemy projectiles seem pretty easy to avoid, at least at the moment. As long as you're not like messing around too much. Might make it too easy. We'll see. Okay, and you can just pop the shields off of those guys. Is this money? Oh, it is money. Okay, so we don't want to miss out on that to some degree. How do we? Ah, there we are. There we go. Yeah, the movement and the grappling hook and whatnot feels way smoother than I, I thought it was going to. I normally shy away from uh, first-person shooter roguelikes. Like, I love them, don't get me wrong. But uh, so many of them feel bad, and it's very difficult to tell which ones are going to be good or not. And so the ones that seem like they have a little bit more parkour movement, I'm usually kind of iffy on. Because uh, that al almost always comes with like just a large degree of extra complication. Okay, you're unsettling. Dang shotgun squid. Well, I said it was reasonably easy to avoid their shots. But that only goes for these dudes. Okay, you can stun them if you, you pop their... Those off, I've leveled up. Should I guess boost my stats? Looks like I'm fine, though. I wonder if I can warp back. Well, we have enough for a perk. Flash sneakers. Increase movement speed. Okay, so it looks like this might follow a um, a risk of rain. Do a tab. Can I warp? Yes, you can teleport. They've learned some good lessons here. What is what is this? Uh, pixel blast might be a new weapon. I don't know. We're gonna have to come back to it. So let's just go over here. I might want to save up my money for that just to have it. I know if it's purple, it seems like it's probably worth it. I don't think we want the turret, though. I don't think that's going to help us much. Okay, this is a shop. So we can get fast swipe, mega shield, or plasma beam. We can also get health and ammo, but... Um, can't do anything with either of them at the moment. We'll figure it out. But yeah, most, most first-person shooters with parkour tend to mess me up. I don't hate them. I think it's mostly just a... Uh, aiming while on the move is hard enough as it is. Adding like parkour and bullet hell elements to that quickly, you know, renders a game kind of frustrating to me. So like a little bit of auto aim on this would actually go kind of a decent ways. Maybe it already has it. Okay, I should probably just shoot shotgun boy. Because there's two of them, and I don't want to... I don't want to be subjected to that. What? Okay, lockdown. Oh. Okay, good. You can click to reload, too. There we go. I don't know what happens if you fall into the pit. but I'm not taking that risk. Okay, I should probably actually take care of this guy. The other guys are easy enough to dodge. But if I can take him out, then we have considerably less to worry about. Oh, you know what's going on? I'm, there's a bug and it has something to do with Windows 10. If you have this in borderless windowed mode, as opposed to like, yeah, windowed full screen, oh, I can't change it. It eats inputs 
but I can't change it on this menu. So I'll have to get out of this run before I can fix it. So there might be a couple of points where I seem frustrated because I can't um, do anything. That's a cool looking sword. I don't know if I want a cool looking sword here though. I mean, I guess I have a decent amount of money. We could also get a random perk. I think I'm going to, let's go here first. Oh, that's a skill. What is Plasma Beam? Oh, I can do Cancel. Okay, so I didn't buy it. I don't know what Fast Swipe is, but... Yeah, do we want to just go buy a bunch of random perks from chests? I think I think that's the play. That's the play that I at least care about. Oh, that's just the Teleporter pad. Got it. I was wondering what those were when I was on the level, because it didn't seem like a booster. And now I know. All right, we got boost cash obtained. Yeah, I think this is the right call. Now there's something in, in this room that I don't know what that, oh, that's the one that eats my spare items that I don't want. Yeah, they made it pretty easy to get around here. I appreciate, do I take damage on that? The answer is no. Good to test that in a safe, environment. So I've still got 531. Oh, it's a chest that I already opened. This room has a couple of chests I haven't opened yet, though. I just figured the passive perks are going to give me maybe useful things. Unfortunately, it seems to be mostly just regular stat ups than anything else. I don't hate that kind of sis system situation. Oh, this actually looks kind of bossy. So we'll leave that for a a smidge. Um, but yeah, I find this stat up system, it works well enough. Like, it works fine. Eh, goofed it, but it's fine. It works well enough, like, in Risk of Rain. I think in a lot of cases, because the stat ups tend to be kind of interesting. And so there's kind of that inherent interest factor. Uh, it's more exciting to get a stat up in those because it's just like, oh, what's this one do? You know, sometimes it's just basic uh, stuff like attack speed and whatnot. Sometimes it's like weird and exciting and cool. Uh, or can be stacked like a bunch of times for bizarre effects. Bizarre? Cool? Effects? Uh, I'm specifically thinking of like uh, barbed wire in OG Risk of Rain, I guess Risk of Rain returns now, where stack a bunch of that and you get like a massive nuke AoE around you that just shreds things. But of course you have to actually be able to choose. What is this? Energy disc. Let's grab it. It's a skill. I might as well use it. Zone that boosts your team's damage. Oh, I was assuming energy disc would be a hook to the other side. Okay, where's up there? Oh, it's up there. Why are my... Why is my damage so good? I don't know. Just wait here. See, I think there's another skill up that direction. Do I have enough money for it? I do not. Nope. As worth a shot. Let's not go through this. Music's pretty good. I mean, it's mostly just like bumping, but bumping in a good way. Okay, what do we have here? What are you? Oh, boss key. Nope, not a boss key. Why do I suddenly do so much damage? It's not because I've leveled up. I have no idea. It feels like I'm clobbering and I don't know why exactly, but that's fine. All right, so I got the key. Boss is there. Let's go back. I should have enough for another perk chest. I'd like to maybe get that. So Do I want that sword? I don't know. Dash leaves a turn turn bomb. The heck is a turn bomb? Well, I guess we'll find out as we go along. Okay. Oh, sector main target. This is the boss. What the heck is this thing then? Oh, we want to go this direction. 
This might be like a battle room or something. Well, on the plus side, it seems like my damage zone. Uh, let's see. My damage zone seems to have a pretty short cooldown, which is nice. Okay. Ah. Like, very short cooldown. Avoid those. Ow, did actually take a hit. Okay, enemies seem to be pretty generous with their shield drops, too. Okay, right, we get Frost Shade. Summon an Imp to release a powerful energy beam. Cool. Okay, so where are we going next? Got one more of these. Yeah, I'm just out to get, get as much uh, dosh as I possibly can. As much dosh, as many goodies, as cool of stuff as I can possibly get. Oops. None of that you. Is that all of them? No. Let's see, there's something down below all the way, all the way across. There we go. Now this looks like a weapon I could probably work with. One immediate problem is it does have limited ammo. I'm not keen on limited ammo, but I'm not against it. Ooh, where does this go? Probably just back, yeah. All right, let's go the other direction. I'm leery about using a melee weapon at the moment. I'm sure it'd be fine, but I don't know. You never know. Okay, so I could also buy a shotgun. I like shotguns. But how much, how much money do I have? Because I'd like to go... Okay, I think I've bought every perk chest I can. So let's go back to this. Are you... Okay, creates a shield. Oh, shield that blocks projectiles. And killing reduces cooldowns. Okay, so I got three weapons. I wonder how many weapons I can have. Oh. Huh. All right. I got 403. I don't think I can buy the shotgun. I might be able to, but I think it's kind of low on the list. Let's go fight the boss. The ability to bro Brock. The ability to block projectiles seems interesting. Oh, you look fun. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm not big on my damage zone that much. Ow. Ooh. I guess the trick is... <clears throat> to go diving through its um, damage zone. Like, just split the difference rather than try and hop in place. Jumping is, I think, just a little too... inconsistent, maybe? And yeah, it does look like I'm getting my shield back slowly. Let's just reload. There we go. Oh, the boss fight's pretty good. Beats are good. I just gotta turn down the guns. Okay, so he's doing this again. Oop, that was almost all of my HP. I jumped too high. Please die, sir. I deserve this. My gun's out. Or it's not. Damn it. Okay, you know I said the thing about the window mode? Uh, my gun was not out. I just, it would not let me fire. Yeah, it's it's something to do. It's not Windows 10, it's Windows 11. Sorry. 
Uh, so let's go back to HQ and I'm going to go fix that issue. I have no idea why it happens. And to, to my knowledge, there's absolutely no fix for it apart from just going into regular full screen mode. It's fine. It's just every year I am every year, every Microsoft window. Oh, can I not even change it from here? Uh oh. Yeah, it doesn't look like it can change this at all. So I'll just have to live with, live with it for today. Uh, Cause I don't think there's a way that I can force it. So what do we have here? Does this unlock it so I can use it? Or do I start with it? Auto targeted mid range beam. Interesting. Let's see, Duro's tech. These are probably new things to find. Eh, some of those might actually be meta progression. That said, I am here for one thing and one thing alone. Hans. Space biker pants. I mean, honestly, I kind of like the poison assassin. They all go together kind of well. I could be a cardboard man. I was one of those kids that had the uh, the cardboard cardboard armor as a kid. Actually, the Ryu pants are just kind of good all rounders. Or the drip pants? Let's go with the drip. Is it drip or orip? I have no idea. One way or another, I got pants now. Oh, we have some other things? Oh no, this is just telling me what I've unlocked so far. Wait, you mean to tell me that I actually had pants this whole time? I guess I should have been paying attention. Ooh, sick robot armor? I guess what do we have for like masks? I don't know. Let's just be... Let's just be Fishbowl Samurai. This hair... Okay. Hair doesn't make any sense here. I wish the fish would actually have the hair instead, because that would be amazing. Okay. Let's make sure we are... Oh, that's our spray. Orange. There we go. Alright. Fishbowl Ninja, let's do another run. I'll just try and do better this time around. I mean, I was pretty close to winning. I just goofed that one section. Because, yeah, you really have to do, like, a jump and then a dash through as much of it as you can. But at least I have sick pants and a hat now. Is that a guitar? Oh, because they're, they're very much borrowing from the... Um, Let's see, they're they're very much borrowing from the Gungeon school of weapon design here. Not that I can complain too much. Gungeon had some pretty fun weapons to play around with. Okay. Also, it seems like that might have gotten a little harder. Which I can't complain too much about. And now we know. Red is a weapon, so don't buy it unless you actually want it. Oh, there's still an enemy somewhere. Excuse me, sir. I need you to perish so I can buy sweet music. Oh. You're a little bit more effort than I thought it was going to be. I, yeah, I have enough money for the guitar. Fight with the power of music. Oh, I was going to hope it was a Risk of Rain reference. Was his music electric? I would, I would like to know. Now, do we get do I get ammo for this thing? That's the one potential downside is that I might have some really good weapons that I'm gonna have to purchase ammo for. I know it would be a lot of work, but I almost kind of wish the. Um, the guitar specifically, rather than having it like its own music, just added an electric guitar to whatever the song currently is. Shooting has a chance of launching a missile. New year, sick. All right. And yeah, I want to stay away from disc 
the disc power up this time around. Too many things require me to be constantly in motion. Whoops, didn't work. Ultimate armor. Probably just extra durability, maybe. How come we don't have enough money for that perk? We are super close to being able to afford it. I like the level design so far. It's... I'm not going to say it's, like, fun to explore these levels, but it actually feels like I am going through a level. You know, not to besmirch Risk of Rain's specific design. But it does suffer a little bit from just, like, hey, you're in the same level that you've been in, like, a gazillion times. I guess this is going to suffer from that, too. But this feels a little bit closer to, like, Tower of Guns or Battle Shapers. It doesn't have that, like, sweet floatiness of Tower of Guns. I've been waiting for another roguelike FPS to really copy that, like, that game's grace. It's the only way I can uh, put it to words, that that game had, like, a very specific speed and cadence to it that I've been um, sorely missing. Like, even, even Mother Gunship didn't quite get it. Power bar. Skills recharge faster. Cool, if only I had skills. Sick burn. Okay. Uh, battle room? You know what? Let's go Let's go to the tiny chest room first. I'm going to keep grabbing these in case one of them gives me the money. Rage mode can withstand one additional hit. Rage mode. All right, let's go back here. I'm not too worried, and we can always whip out the guitar. Oh, R. Rage mode. Okay, so we have some kind of boosted mode. Was, did I have access to that earlier? Probably. I wonder if we can dodge through enemy projectiles. That was most of my shield. But at least we get that back pretty easy. So if you're ever wondering why I'm looking at an enemy and nothing is happening, it's because Windows has decided my mouse isn't going to register inputs for a while. Ow. At least I haven't lost health yet. Sometimes it's great. Other times, not so much, though. Eh. There we go. All right. We get a shotgun for our troubles. You know what? I'll take it. I didn't really get to... Well, I haven't really used the shotgun yet, because I passed it up. I said, not for me today. I'm curious how many different weapons you can actually run around with over the course of the run. Uh, the one unfortunate thing I will say is that uh, as much as I like the Gungeon weapons, I think they're cool, they do suffer from a feeling of... Oh. It's behind me. Uh... They do suffer from a lack of... I don't want to say scaling. But I'm a big fan of... Wow, that was it. Alright. I'm a big fan of the Binding of Isaac style, like... Builds velocity, if that makes sense. Uh, that over the course of a Binding of Isaac run, you get progressively goofier. Okay, so this is Pixel Blast, Pickaxe... And then Mega Shield. I don't know what the pickaxe does. Let's grab the Pixel Blast. Three blazing shots. Fair enough. Um, so, how would I describe it? Unless you have duct tape in Gungeon, every single time you pick up, say, the t-shirt cannon, it's going to be about the same effect. Now, the main thing is just, like, having a massive arsenal of weapons that you can swap between as, like, a wide variety of options over the course of a run rather than having like one gun that changes dramatically over the course of said run but I will always be a fan of the like here's your one attack it gets ridiculous by the end because I find I, I find I tend to get kind of bored of roguelikes where it's just like hey this is the same gun that you had the last couple times you know if my shotgun is virtually the same shotgun every single round I'm not too excited about it. 
I like the warning if there's an enemy behind you and shooting. It's actually, they did a good job of notifying me as a player that like, hey, you're going to get shot from behind, boy. I like that. A lot of games don't do a very good job of that one. Okay, so how do we activate? Let me check controls. <laughs> and I can't check my key bindings. It's not R. Oh, door's locked, of course. Um, I don't remember tutorializing how to activate rage mode, but I think I want to save that for the boss anyway. Pop this open? Yeah. Track pickups from farther. It really feels like if you pop them in the weak point, they go down near instantly. Okay, and that's that's the one that just munches perks. I don't think I'm going to do that almost ever. Maybe if there's something that really doesn't fit the build. Running for the wall, and it did not, did not want to take. Okay. Whoops. It seems like at least for these basic dudes, just jumping and dashing and dodging does the trick quite well. There we go. I really should probably go for the shotgun boys first. But it's fine. Okay, where are we at? I'll just go here. Um, and so I think this weapon system is fine and enjoyable enough. It's just one of those where, like, a part of me is is hoping that I can find, like, oh, it's a good example. Plus one projectiles or something like that. So if you're firing one bullet, now you're fire, firing two. Sure, it can come with a downside. I don't mind that. Um, and, like, the little rockets uh, proccing. I can see that being kind of fun. Um, I just want, like, interesting scalability. Like, I mean, God's Finger. So you can have four. Otherworldly Lightning, where you point. Okay, yeah, that sounds fun. But it looks like you can have a whole bunch of different weapons here. Okay, and a random chest. And I think we're done with the run. Or, not the run, the level. So what is that? Weapon damage boost. Sick. So, nothing in the shop that I care about. Perk Muncher, we've bought pretty much everything that there is to buy. Cool. Let's head for the boss and actually kick its butt this time around, seeing as I've got a multitude of weapons that should hopefully do decent amounts of damage to it. And it looks like it's this guy again. I'm going to miss, mess you up with the, the power of twang twang. Okay, unfortunately, I don't think I have much ammo on this. Oh no, I've got plenty. Wow. There we go. He really does not like guitar music. Okay, do we get anything good for it? Nah, we go through here. Hopefully we get an ammo pickup, but it might be one of those that I have to buy more. Yeah, I just have to buy more at the shop. I was hoping for goodies. Oh, I forgot to do my pixel blast. No, it's okay. So stage completed. Ooh. Ah, end of demo. But at the very least, we can go back. I... I'm fine with demo limitations like that. As a content creator, I'd much prefer to just have, like the whole run even if it's jank or repetitive or missing content or frankly if it's one of those where it just puts you on endless level one but it gets harder every time okay so what do we want to do you know what seeing as i've kind of well actually let's go take a look at hats real quick see if there's any that fit my persona a bit better Okay, Poison Assassin is still cool. Slot machine. TV head. Diver helmet. Slime skull. 
Yeah, honestly, I'm going to stick with the fishbowl. Okay, so what can we do? Increase weapon damage. I think these are passives. Starting weapon deals more damage. Increase base health. Discount on all shop items. Stronger shield. Let's grab the homemade. I was hoping to go for the sale coupons, but let's just go with increased base health. So these are passives that I think I just start with, and I can get a whole bunch of them if I want to. Neat. Well, on the plus side, because the runs are short and I don't have to worry about conservation, we can just kind of chuck ourselves in. I I think this is something that, like, if, you, if you're a developer making a roguelike and you're going to have a demo or a preview event or anything like that, um, I think it's important to kind of keep in mind the creators might be playing at this point. Um, but I think I think this is true in general, not just a creator thing. But the last thing you want your demo to feel is like too... You don't want your demo to be too much, but you don't want it be to be too little either. Wow. Okay, peace out on that. Let's not be there. These floaty dudes are a concern. Okay, scoot through. Don't want to take too much damage here. Husk's eye. Whoops. Well, we get to see what happens. Lose. Looks like I lose half my shield. That's fine, actually. Falling into the pit. Um, but I think it depends on the game. For roguelikes and stuff, I think there is literally nothing wrong with offering too much in a demo. Um, and that might just be a, a me thing. Um, but for roguelikes, for anything that has like a high degree of replayability, I don't think you can go wrong by just offering more as part of your demo. And if you don't have enough content for that, well, that's fine. Just make the, make the same content extremely replayable. Um, even if it's an, a slightly unsatisfying factor, the last thing you want to do is is have players kind of in this situation where they're like wanting more, but there is no not more. I mean, maybe that's fine. Maybe that gets people more likely to play it. Um, but I guess maybe on a, more of like a community building side of things, uh, having a a lengthier, like beefier. I wonder if that's just a... Oh, turret skill. Okay. Grab this. Oh, I can't... I can't buy it yet. Ow, rude. I didn't realize Shield Boy could shoot. Plink him down. There we go. I don't know. I'm probably wrong on this one, and other developers have had probably other experiences. Um, but for me, at least, like, having a meaty demo that I can really sink my teeth into as opposed to, like, a 10-minute loop feels so much more satisfying, even if it's just like, yeah, I could see this potentially... Well, do we want to grab ultimate armor? Sure. Defensive state makes you invincible to damage, reduces movement speed. Eh, sure. I don't know. I guess, uh... I want more. I'm I'm actually thoroughly enjoying this, and it's it sucks that I can only play 10 minutes. But, I mean, at least the meta progression and the cosmetic rewards are still there. And it would actually be kind of sweet if they stuck around. I think just ascension levels or just endless looping would be the quick solution and would make, the, make even the demo here feel very satisfying. Okay, let's put the turret down. Okay. Turrets rad? Okay, I have to check. As part of this, does the lockdown quantity go down? Not over time. Yeah. I mean, that should be obvious, but rather than go down over time. Clap if you're happy and you know it. Okay, these weapons are kind of silly. Oh. Wait. Is this even a weapon? It has unlimited ammo. I get the distinct feeling this might not actually be a viable weapon, but who knows?
Okay. Oh my god, it does one damage. <laughs> that sucks so much. It's funny. But, uh... Not exactly useful. It'd be cool if it was like a team buffer, though. Like, if you're playing multiplayer and you can clap for them and it gives them a damage boost. So rather than being at all useful about, uh, at taking down enemies, you can, like, go clap for your allies and give them, like, small bonuses. Kind of like a bard, but, uh, less music. Next time I play d and I might actually... <laughs> D and D or Pathfinder, any game where I can play as a bard and actually have bard bard abilities, I think um, I think I might see if I can get away with just being like goofy hype man. You know, I'm just gonna give them a standing ovation in the middle of combat instead of like bardic song or anything like that. There we go. So that's at 20 seconds. I wonder if I can actually reduce the cooldown on the turret to be short enough that the turret will actually, um, that I can actually have multiple turrets out at once. And yeah, now that I'm getting used to, used to the movement and combat of this, it's actually, it's feeling very good to me. I was worried about the parkour elements But they, so far, have felt very smooth and easy to work around, especially in combat. And the uh, enemies have very nice, big, weak points to work work with as well. Okay, so what are you? Viper Strike. I want it. Long range quad missile launcher. I think I wish the uh, the level up system didn't exist. I like it for like, hey, you've killed a bunch of enemies, you've leveled up, your stats get a boost. I wish it actually was attached to the guns. That, uh, depending on the gun you're using, it gives you different stat stat points. Oh, I'm... Wait, no, I've got plenty of ammo for this thing. What am I doing? Shotgun? How many guns can I have? Maybe all of the guns. Um, but... You know, if you use a gun a bunch, it levels you up. Is this... Ooh, crossbow. Five weapons. Yeah, I'm just going to pick up every weapon I possibly can here, because why not? The perk chests are nice, but they don't make that much of a difference, and I just want to mess around with things. Um, I don't think we need the skill that bad, though. We might want the pickup radius. What are you? Plasma wire. Sounds fun. We just already have two perks, which is kind of unfortunate. I, okay. Uh, so I, I'm going to just keep pumping out ideas here just because it feels like this has a really good foundation for exactly the kind of roguelike I want. It just doesn't have the, um, the cool perk replayability that differentiates builds. Uh, one other problem is, to some degree, I've got, like, five guns. It's not a problem per se, uh, but I'm going to have favorites, and well, that's not strictly bad to have, like, one favorite gun or another, it does kind of make uh, it kind of pointless to keep throwing more guns at me as a player, unless they're very committed uh, to, like, forcing me to swap often due to limited ammo or something. This crossbow is incredibly satisfying. But, I mean, that's been kind of true of every weapon I've used so far. Um, but, da, 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 da. but what I was going to say is, if every weapon instead had its own, like, kind of level on the side, and maybe it's one of those that every, like, two gun levels raises the bare minimum for all gun levels, um, just as kind of like a, 
hey, you've been using this gun for a while. Here's a sweet perk or two associated with it. Like, um, I don't know, the crossbow now fires uh, three projectiles instead of one in a fan pattern. Or your, your crossbow projectiles have piercing. Or they have ricochet. You know, kind of have those little options. I'm obsessed with that kind of those kinds of systems because it's always fun to like pick the crossbow and say, no, this time I want piercing. So we also have the banana sniper, the katana and adrenaline hit. I have yet to figure out how to use the rage mode. These are expensive. Everything is expensive. I'll come back to the shop. We'll grab the banana sniper on the way out. I just want to make sure I have as many um, perk chests as possible for no apparent reason. I don't think I need them. Okay. Uh, kind of in a similar fashion, skills. Once you already have your two skills, subsequent skills are kind of worthless. And I actually kind of wish you could absorb guns that you don't want. Uh, guns and skills. So if you run across a skill that like does not fit your build, uh, or you picked up a skill but you don't like it, instead of just like getting rid of it, um, you can specifically absorb its stats into something else. Shoot faster. Sick. Uh, so for example, like the the armor upgrade that I have here. I mean, especially if it could actually apply to like a couple of different things. So either it gives you extra like durability, or it's just like a flat bonus. Grab the plasma beam. Okay. Anything else? No. Let's go to the shop. I should have enough. Because, yeah, I just left that one thing behind and I have no functional use for it. Banana sniper. Powerful sniper that shoots bananas. And we'll grab adrenaline hit because what else am I going to do? Let's go mess the boss up. Um, but some level of kind of like options there would go a long way. I'd also say even within the... Oh. It's not clap. Ow. I might not survive this one. Okay, shotgun. Yeah, I'm dying. But so is he. Nope. <sighs> Hitbox is bigger than I thought it was. I was a little too cavalier and I was messing around with the guns too much, but also it doesn't matter. Um, it matters a little, but not over much. Angie fish. I think you get vaguely about the same amount of resources, too. Um, oh, right. The other thing I was going to say is I wish chess gave you a choice between like one to three, considering you don't get a whole lot of them either. Because uh, we were getting those like rage mode lasts for like a little bit longer. Just go for a stronger shield. That'll probably make this a little bit easier. Let's do one more run. Oh, right. We have a slide. Egg on my face. I completely forgot that it, that exists and I should probably be using it. Um, But I don't want to say that like roguelikes are best when they're giving you hard choices. But I think that's that's where they stand for me. That the best roguelikes are always the ones that make me think like, oh man, do I do I want to go for Guppy's head, even though it's not that useful now, on the off chance that we can get Guppy over the course of this run, or do I want to go for, um, oh shoot, spectral tears, so I have piercing, or do I want to uh, re-roll everything instead and see if I can maybe get brimstone and go for a brimstone run. If that makes sense. Um. I'm like, not everything has to be Binding of Isaac, but part of the reason why I always found Gungeon maybe a little bit un 
unfulfilling and risk of rain to some degree is that there wasn't really much of a feeling of like this is my build that i'm going for yeah, let's grab the frost shade Do I have enough for another yeah boots hyper speed Oh, missed. Must have eaten my input. It's fine. Oh, that loss in mobility when the hyperspeed wears off is jarring. Be nice if it actually had a bit of a ramp up and a ramp down. That might just be a me thing. Ow, it's fine. I think part of it is because I have no reason to care about whether or not I win or lose this run. I'm a little um, too blasé about what happens to me. I'm just here. And I mean, it's kind of feedback time. I should mention, by the way, none of these things are decryals against the game. I, I know it's not uncommon that I start like dumping feedback on a developer uh, for like a game that is in early access or um, that is in early access or even pre-release and people are like if you hate the game so much stop playing and it's like no i actually like this game if i hated any of the games that i'm covering i would not be covering them um and you can i don't want to say you can always tell that like the more i like a game the more feedback i will give it because that's not true there's a lot of games that i absolutely adore that i will give no feedback to because it's meaningless to do, do so the game's just too good um but I find for, like, very promising upcoming roguelikes uh, that have a really solid foundation but might not have that, that, like, secret sauce that makes roguelikes good. That's what I'm kind of trying to point out, like, hey, the secret sauce cannot be ignored. I remember years ago, I played uh, Hadean, Hadean Tactics. Lovely auto-battler roguelike, by the way. Really solid... Uh, really solid end results. Um, but I remember doing, like, a video on it. I, no, it didn't. It wasn't even a video. I had streamed it. Uh, on, like, its early access release or something to that extent. And as part of it, I had said that the game desperately needed more secret sauce. Because uh, it didn't have enough and it felt like it was almost there, but it was kind of unsatisfying. I think this has got a little bit more, uh, mostly owing to a much more engaging core gameplay loop. But I always feel like... Eh. I always feel like roguelikes need to figure out that secret sauce quick. Otherwise, they kind of fade to irrelevancy. Uh, what's a good example of this? Uh, Dead Link, maybe. Solid FPS roguelike but i don't enjoy playing it and maybe that's just a me thing and it do it just doesn't like vibe with me but i was one of those games that had really good fundamentals but none of it was fun it was too much like running around and trying to like specifically weaken enemies so you could get like shields and ammo which wasn't bad and it was just kind of a pain in the butt rather than fun this is a lot more on the fun side like it's got the fundamentals down well this is a legitimately fun third per third person parkour shooter kind of parkour shooter it's very light on the parkour but what it does it does well um it's just the roguelike elements i think are a little thin and need to be buffed up really hard and if it can then it's going to be incredibly good To kind of go back to the idea of, like, being able to upgrade things, I would love to be able to upgrade that laser, even. So it can do different things. Like, what if what if you had, like, one level of it makes it so it, um, it tracks enemies? And one level of it instead adds, like, a handful of beams, but the beams will uh, just, like, randomly move around. Or they don't. Or one that's just, like, absolutely huge, I'm firing my laser style. Um, and I mean that could even be something as simple as like hey your passives affect your weapon uh, your weapons and your well 
your passive stat bonuses have benefits for your use items as well. So like chance to apply burn when dealing damage. I would assume by default that applies to the the laser as well in the turret. But if it doesn't, then it probably should. But I'm thinking if you ever get like an upgrade that makes your bullets bigger. Uh, just for like, I don't know, exploiting weak, weak spots better. Okay, that fire effect actually might be really good. Oops, sir. There we go. Like, I love that laser. That's a really cool uh, ability and I want to use it more. <laughs> the other thing I would actually say, uh, maybe to some degree get rid of the ammo system. Just uh, either make some of the guns weaker to compensate or make it so that you have to use like another weapon to get the ammo back. Maybe. I don't know, I don't like the idea of having to be like conservative with my ammunition in a game like this. And that might just be like a, a me thing and maybe other people have different preferences. But from my perspective, the guns are so fun. I want to use them. Uh, but I don't want to have to worry about like, oh, you've run out of ammo and you won't find more for your favorite weapon for the rest of this run. Unless you sink a lot of money into buying ammunition. I mean, I guess that's fine. It's probably worth it. Okay. What else we got? A little bit more. I think I'll be fine this time against the boss, maybe. I don't know. Does it matter? It is interesting the... Division, the division, the disparity between different builds on my runs. Because the last run, I was absolutely swimming in. Oh, I wonder if my own laser can hurt me. Uh, last run, I was swimming in weapons. This time around, I've got a decent amount of passives and active abilities. Now right, let's go see if this gun's good. Oh, it's the dual pistols. I don't hate them. They're just um kind of bottom barrel compared to most of the other weapons I've found so far. Let's get the turret down. Oh, smokes. But it might also be because I have to fire them often? Maybe. No, they got better. I'm not sure why. Might just be because I'm actually using them against regular enemies as opposed to the boss. That's probably it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I just want to be able to upgrade my cool weapons and abilities more. Okay, Jump Shock and Blood Machine. Never mind, I should not have bought Jump Shock. Oh well. There's a weapon here? Oh yeah, there's the pickaxe. Sure. Not a tool, but a surprisingly strong weapon. Unfortunately, I'm bringing it into a boss fight, and I'm pretty sure it's melee only. Ah, melee only, but unlimited ammo. So that's probably the big benefit of... That's probably the big benefit of... Okay. Ow, that hurts really bad. Yeah, I said it'd be fine. I don't know, it really does seem to matter whether or not he's getting me with that stinking, like, ring field ability or not. If he's not slinging that at me, I think we survive. I'm curious how this works in multiplayer. Like how much easier or harder it is. Oh, that's fine. Like, can you pick up allies? Or do they respawn at the end of the level? Or do they not? 
I hope so. It's pretty rough when you play a roguelike where once your friends are dead, they're dead. And they ain't coming back. I think I've only ever played like one roguelike like that and it was not fun. I guess actually Risk of Rain kind of fits that bill. Because if you die too early in a run, you lose out on very crucial upgrades and, and levels that you kind of need to survive. And then you're usually just hosed for the rest of it. Uh, I guess we do get an extra 10 for beating the boss. So it's worth killing him. Either way, I think this is a good stopping point. I could do more, but I feel like I'm I'm probably... Probably overdoing it for things. I love this guy. The fact that he's super huge and is like building guns as though they're small toys. And some of these look really cool too. So like auto-targeted mid-range beam. That sounds fun. Bouncing bullets. Bullet that does more damage after bouncing. Cool. But yeah, these are all different weapons. And one other thing, and I, I'm going to keep bringing this up until a developer does it. Uh, but, and that's not a threat. It's just a like, man, I would love to see one of these games have kind of the transistor system. Whereas if you pick up a weapon, every weapon has kind of a special feature that, that defines the gun. But you can put it on another weapon and it applies that special feature to said gun. Oh, hey, we got some other things. Weapon skills and perks. Extra dash, revive with health once, burnt enemies receive double damage, dash resets air jumps. Oh, baby, that's nuts. Yeah, some of these are really good. I'm looking forward to playing them. Like, th the passive system is great. I think it's mostly just, I want to see a little bit more choices when picking up chests so I can be like, yeah, I don't really use the adrenaline mode. I don't even know how to do that yet because I don't know what the button is. Um... And, like, I gotta remember to actually press it. I just forget when I'm in the middle of combat. Um, but being able to, like, choose passives from chess would be the bare minimum. Uh, purely from the perspective of, like, it would be very satisfying. Oh, uh, these are different solar core spots. Uh, it's just very satisfying when you can um, kind of curate the build that you're aiming for. Anything here? No. Scram Raider. Cripes. Um... And having at least a couple of options uh, goes very far at making it a game more interesting, especially over the course of a longer run. Um, I guess I could see like too much control means that the game loses a lot of that randomness, but too much randomness loses all control and then you're just kind of along for the ride hoping you get a good run. I don't know, there's a bunch of different ways to do it, but I think, like I've said before, this is a really good foundation and I want to see more of it. The fact that it is multiplayer and has this visual style are pretty big for me. I, I liked Blue Fire. I thought it was a neat game. Um, I don't think I ever, I don't think our footage ever went out for it or maybe it did, I forget. Um, but this feels a lot more in line with my interests and it seems very refined to me, uh, even for the early demo that they've put out. And so I can very much see this being a lot of fun with friends at a later date. But for now, at least, if you guys want to play, uh, if you want to play the Solar Raiders demo yourselves, it's available on Steam. Uh, so just follow the link in the description below and you can give it a shot yourselves. Bring friends too, because I think the multiplayer is currently functional. Um, and of course, if you want to see more rad new games every single day, then hit subscribe because I got tons to check out and show off. And of course, if you like the video, leave a like. Helps a lot. But with that, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.